Hi, my name is Ben Freer, and today I'm going to talk about how to find an E2 lawyer to help with your application. Now, I know what many of you are probably thinking. This guy is an E2 lawyer, so of course he's going to try to make the case that he is the best person to help with the E2 visa application process. But I can assure you that that is not the case. I may be the right person for some applicants, but for many others, I'm not the right fit. And you'll see why when I go through these five things that you should consider when you are trying to find an E2 lawyer. The first thing to consider is cultural background. Going through the E2 visa process can be intimidating. Are you someone who would feel more comfortable working with a lawyer who shares your cultural background? If so, the good news is that many U.S. immigrants become amazing immigration lawyers. If you can find an immigration lawyer who is an immigrant and has had similar experiences or shares a native language with you, that shared cultural identity could give you a lot of comfort during the process. Consideration number two relates to communication preferences. Who do you want to communicate with during the process? In smaller practices, you'll have a lot of direct communication with the E2 lawyer. In other practices, you may communicate primarily with a paralegal. Both scenarios can work really well, but you should consider your preferences and make sure that you know who the contact person will be before you hire your lawyer. Also, how do you want to communicate? In other words, what method of communication do you prefer? In my practice, I leverage technology to communicate and collaborate with my clients. So if you're not comfortable with email, scanning documents, participating in video conferences, or sharing documents via a cloud-based portal, then I'm not going to be a great fit, and that is fine. Consideration number three is location. One of the things I enjoy most about practicing immigration law is that I get to work with clients across the globe. Since immigration law is federal in nature, an E2 lawyer based in Charlotte, North Carolina can help a client in New Zealand who is opening a business in New Jersey. I love that. But maybe you don't love that. Maybe you don't want to communicate via emails, calls, and video conferences. Maybe you would prefer face-to-face -face meetings. If that is the case, then you should select a lawyer who is located in an area where you can meet in person. Consideration number four is desired services. There are three types of prospective clients that I encounter in my practice. Category A is consultation seekers. People in this group have typically done a lot of research on the E2 visa process, and they feel pretty comfortable filing their own application. However, they want just a little bit of help from a lawyer. They want to find someone who will review the application for a consultation fee. Category B, traditional E2 visa lawyer seekers. People in this group are looking for a lawyer who will sort of be the project manager. They will handle all aspects of the E2 visa application process from filing to interview, and they will offer referrals and collaborate with other professionals who will help with other associated tasks such as tax planning, entity creation, and business plan drafting. Category C is comprised of the one-stop shoppers. This group does not want to deal with a number of different service providers. They want one firm to handle everything from entity creation to tax advice to business plan creation, and they're willing to pay a premium price to receive all those services from one provider. In my practice, I only help people in category B but if you're a consultation seeker or a one-stop shopper, I'm confident that you'll find a lot of fantastic options for the type of service that you desire. Consideration number five is focus. In my former professional life, I was a trial lawyer who wasn't entirely satisfied with that type of work, so I started to look into other practice areas, including immigration law. And during that period of exploration, I started to appreciate the fact that immigration law is incredibly broad. So I decided that in order to maintain my sanity, I would focus and concentrate on handling a few different types of cases. I was clueless about the broad nature of immigration law until I started to dive into the subject. So I assume that consumers of legal services are equally unaware of this reality. So my advice is this, since immigration law is so broad, do not assume that everyone who practices immigration law will know how to properly handle an E2 visa application. Ask your prospective lawyer about the cases that they handle most frequently. So there you have it. Those are my thoughts on how to find an E2 lawyer.
regardless of your preferences, you're going to have a lot of great options. Warriors who practice in this area tend to have a lot of appreciation for U.S. immigrants. They're passionate about their work and they treat their clients with the respect that they deserve. So best of luck on your search. And if you did enjoy this video, please like it or pass it along to someone who could benefit from it. Thank you for your time.